proxy war with Russia. We had 5 million people cross our border illegally since Joe Biden took office. And let's compare that to how many Russians have invaded Ukraine. 82,000 Russians have invaded Ukraine. I think the American people and the taxpayers of this country deserve to know why the Biden administration and this Congress is so interested in funding the protection of Ukraine's border and not the protection of our border. That's a very good question. Tell you what, the new Republican House majority is exactly the amount of ridiculous that I assumed it would be. Gotta give them credit, at least they're consistent in their absurdity. Here, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the woman who's leading Kevin McCarthy by a leash, is equating refugees entering the United States with Russian forces entering Ukraine in an attempt to annex it. And look, I generally try to be fair and measured, I try not to sink down to their level and use insults. This woman is remarkably stupid. I don't know who else needs to hear this, but people migrating to seek a better life in the United States of America is not the same as a genocidal army invading a sovereign country seeking to annex that territory while bombing civilians in hospitals and schools. But it sure is telling that that's what Marjorie Taylor Greene is suggesting here. Just in case there was any doubt about the extent of their xenophobia, this should be pretty illuminating. Granted, this shouldn't be surprising. Republicans have used migrants as political props for years in an attempt to deflect attention away from themselves and their agenda. And so because they don't want people to talk about the fact that they cut taxes for millionaires and billionaires, and they protect subsidies for fossil fuel companies, and ban abortion in states across the country, and pretend that climate change doesn't exist, and defend the gun lobby amid record mass shootings, because they don't want people to pay attention to any of those things, instead they focus on scaring their base by pretending that migrants are coming to steal your jobs and sell drugs to your kids and rape your wives. And of course, that's complete and utter BS. And in fact, studies have shown that immigrant communities are actually safer than communities without immigrants, not to mention that federal law enforcement agencies have found that the most serious threat facing this country right now is white domestic terror, which uh, aren't exactly an immigrant thing. But none of that matters to people like Marjorie Taylor Greene because the point isn't the truth, it is leveraging the lies to score cheap political points. And look, I know that the Democrats have held power for years now, including the House since 2018, and that Republicans were falling over themselves promising you that if you gave them a chance, it would be different. Republicans have made all of these grandiose promises before taking the majority about what they would do, how they would earn back the people's trust. Here's just a sampling of what it sounded like while Republicans were pleading with the people of America to give them one more chance. Republicans have a plan for a new direction that will get our country back on track. Our plan is a commitment to America. If Republicans are given the opportunity. Now, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, here it is again, only with some inspirational music. Republicans have a plan for a new direction that will get our country back on track. Our plan is a commitment to America. If Republicans are given the opportunity and honor to have the majority in the House, we will work day and night hour after hour for you, the people. We will work for an economy that is strong, for a nation that is safe, for a future that is built on freedom. We will fight to stop inflation and lower the cost of living. We will fight to lower the cost of gas. We will stop taxpayer dollars from being wasted on failed programs. We will pass the Parents' Bill of Rights so parents have a say in their children's education. And here's what it looks like in reality. How about when Hunter Biden sent the email that Mr. Comer pointed to, sent the email asking for keys to his new office space, one for himself, one for President Biden, one for his uncle Jim Biden, and one for the emissary for the chairman of the Chinese energy company, CFCT. Behind Glenn and Andrew is a map from Hunter's laptop. This was a PowerPoint presentation on his laptop in Chinese. Mr. Tebolt is also the guy who suppressed information about the Hunter Biden story in October of 2020. I'd like to talk to Mr. Tebolt. In fact, if we can keep it about Hunter Biden. This is kind of a big deal. We think if we can keep it about Hunter Biden, that would be great. How often are they talking to the FBI? Are they talking to the FBI? Who's doing the talking? Who's doing the briefing? Were they briefed? There's, there's so many questions that need answers so we can get to the bottom of this. Th th I think that's a question. I think that's a question for Kevin McCarthy that we're focused on uh, a lot of investigations. Now I've been very transparent with the media on it. Uh, that wasn't one of them. 
Yep, just like they promised. Making America safer, stopping inflation, lowering the cost of living, bringing down gas prices, all by, uh, investigating Hunter Biden. Oh. In other words, these people will never change. They will show up with their empathetic voices and their little pamphlets and promise you this time will be different, like an abusive ex. But like an abusive ex, it will be exactly the same. They will lie to you for your votes and the moment they have power, they'll do exactly what we think they'll do, which is to not lift a finger to ease inflation, which they vowed to do and wailed about for months and months and months, and instead investigate Hunter Biden. Not lift a finger to lower gas prices, which again, they vowed to do and wailed about for months and months and months, and instead hold hearings and to the laptop from hell, not lift a finger to make you safer, whatever that actually means, and instead just talk about the Biden crime family. How many times do you have to watch Lucy pull the football away before you recognize that they will lie every single time? So maybe instead of just hoping that Republicans will change, only to watch them double and triple down on the exact same far right, red meat slinging, pandering to the base they always do, recognize that there is only one party looking out for the people. When Democrats took power, their bills were half bipartisan and on items with 60 to 70% support across the country. They gave health care to veterans and expanded rural broadband. They passed a roads and bridges bill and lowered health care costs for seniors. They capped the price of insulin and passed a chips bill that led hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs across the country, but especially in the Midwest. They tried to forgive student loan debt that's left tens of millions of people in crippling debt. This isn't pandering to the far left, it is helping literally everyone. Contrast that with Republicans, when they take power, their agenda items have sub 30% support like banning abortion and trying to eliminate Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. There are only so many second chances they should get before you start to understand that they are not responsive to the will of the people, they're there to impose their theocratic views onto everyone else. As far as they're concerned, this isn't about you, it's about them. In the meantime, just know that whoever becomes speaker for the Republican Party, the person pulling the strings will be Marjorie Taylor Greene. They have imbued her with all of the power and influence, and she won't hesitate to use it, like she's doing right now. So as Republicans look to start up a whole raft of investigations and serve more red meat to the Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram audience, remember this moment. Republicans asked for your trust, and the very first thing they did was betray it. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.